Okay, so it's mostly random what I'm pulling from the box. I know they're golden books. I'm deliberately staying away from ones that aren't golden books, but because they're golden books, I can't see what they are. Because, you know, covers are gold. Ooh, today is Walt Disney's Pinocchio. Ooh. Oh my good. Well, back when golden books only cost 29 cents, I think this is an all-time low for us. Cost-wise? Yes. Wow. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Another selection from the donated box from Sasami-chan. And wow, this one is an old book. Its stated cover price is 29 cents. And it's D100. So even back at 29 cents, this was apparently the 100th Disney book. Which is Walt Disney's Pinocchio. Illustrations by the Walt Disney Studio. Adapted by Campbell Grant. From the Walt Disney motion picture, Pinocchio. Based on the story by Colati. Well, there's a lot of layers there. Little Golden Book was produced under the supervision of the Walt Disney Studio. Kindly old Geppetto stood at his workbench and carved on a puppet that looked just like a real boy. He sang as he worked, and little Figaro, his cat, played with the chips as they fell from his knife. Jiminy Cricket chirped merrily on the hearth, and the goldfish, Cleo, swam around and around in her bowl. The thing about the goldfish actually reminded me about a fact goldfish were put in bowls by I can't remember which country as decorations and then put back in a larger pond once the event was over hmm. somehow we Americans got the idea in our head that that's actually where you're supposed to put them but carp like big areas there said Geppetto as he held up the puppet you're finished he held the strings and danced the little wooden boy across the floor how I wish you were a real live boy he said what fun we would have, you and Figaro and Cleo and I. What about me? asked a small voice. Couldn't I have fun too? Oh, Jiminy Cricket, of course you could have fun too, laughed Geppetto. You could go everywhere with him to keep him out of trouble. What shall we call him? Pinocchio? Little wooden-headed Pinocchio. I don't remember Jiminy talking to him. I don't either. Remember, this is an adaptation. A dandy name, Pinocchio, cried Jiminy Cricket. He jumped from the floor to the workbench. A dandy name. At that moment, all the clocks in the house started to strike. Old Geppetto looked up. It's nine o'clock, he said. Time for sleep. He placed Pinocchio on the workbench, tumbled Figaro into the big bed, and blew a kiss to Cleo in her bowl. He opened the window, and the light of the evening star streamed into the room. Star light, star bright. He said softly, I wish Pinocchio were a real live boy. But, you know, we do have to take some shortcuts here because it's a little golden book. There's only so many pages. Art's really nice so far. I see some off modelness to this particular page right here. Geppetto's face looks a little off around the chin area, but other than that, everything is. I think that's also. Maybe that image got a little squished in transfer. Because Pinocchio's head also looks a little squished in the frame, too. Yeah, they might have had to condense it a bit, because so far this has been very text-heavy. He looked once more at the merry little puppet, and then settled down in his bed. In a moment, he was snoring. Only Jiminy Cricket was still awake. He was unhappy, thinking old Geppetto would never have his wish. Suddenly, he heard a strange, sweet music. The evening star sailed down through the sky and into Geppetto's window. The cottage was filled with dazzling light, and there stood a lovely fairy dressed all in blue. Who never has to look for a flashlight, because she's got a glowing star on her head and on her wand. I would say she looks a little off model. Yeah, the eyes and the mouth, mostly on that one. It's the blue fairy, whispered Jiminy Cricket. Geppetto will get his wish this time, or my name isn't Jiminy Cricket. The blue fairy flew to the workbench where the little wooden Pinocchio sat and said, Awake, Pinocchio, and live. To you the gift of life I give. Be good and bring Geppetto joy and grow to be a real live boy. And suddenly I'm remembering the actual tale of Pinocchio because Pinocchio was a real brat in that story. Mm -hmm. 
and, and several other non-Disney renditions. He's, yeah. If, if anyone remembers the old Ranklin Bass uh, claymation ones, um, not really, kind of claymation. You know, all those TV specials, The Year Without a Santa Claus, that's one of the better known ones but basically all of those there oh. was a pinocchio one i also remember that geppetto was a little bit more creepy in the other ones about why he wanted a real boy and a son and stuff uh, uh, let's go back to disney then yeah you can imagine geppetto's surprise the next morning when he found pinocchio running around i'm dreaming you can't be alive you're still made of wood said the astonished old man but if I'm brave and good, I'll be a real live boy someday, said Pinocchio joyfully. At last Geppetto said, Now, Pinocchio, it's time for all good boys to go to school. And Pinocchio started out. Pinoc, Jiminy Cricket called, wait for me. But although the Blue Fairy had told Pinocchio that Jiminy Cricket was to be his friend in conscience, Pinocchio did not hear the voice of his little friend. Suddenly, something tripped Pinocchio. It was a cane thrust between his flying feet by the sly old fox, J. Worthington Fowlfellow. Fowlfellow helped Pinocchio to his feet and winked at his partner, Gideon, the bad cat. Ha ha, Pinocchio, began Fowlfellow. You were going a little too fast, a little too fast and in the wrong direction. Now I have a plan for you. Come. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that Disney kind of tweaked about the story. Though I remember in the Ranklin Bass one, Pinocchio referring to these guys as his friends and explained how they taught him about borrowing. Oh. But I'm on my way to school, said Pinocchio. To school? Nonsense, said Fowlfellow. I have a much better plan. Also, how did he enroll in school? Um, I doubt there was actually enrollment back then. The real question is, why is nobody going, oh my god, there's a wooden puppet walking around town? Yeah, that's the, that's the real thing. It's like, um, did, did, did I just see that puppet walk by on its own? No, Bill, but I would recommend switching to decaf. Also, how did Falfellow learn Pinocchio's name? Because this sounds like this is the first time Pinocchio has left the house. The three of them set off, arm in arm, and Jiminy Cricket came panting along behind. Soon they came to a great coach. The two scoundrels took from the wicked-looking coachman a large bag. They had sold Pinocchio for gold. Then they went away laughing. Jiminy was frightened, but he hopped bravely aboard just as the coach drove off. That is a really nice simplification in that drawing. It's well done. It's got just enough of the facial features of everyone there to really give you a sense of these boys, and it's really nice. You can see the one from the movie stand out right there sitting next to Pinocchio in the front of the carriage. When I mean front of the carriage, I mean actually in the front where the driver is. The coach was pulled by six sad little donkeys. It was filled with boys of all sizes and ages, a noisy, rowdy lot. Pinocchio made friends with the leader, a loud boy named Lampwick. But Jiminy sadly hid in a corner. He knew this was not good. I suddenly wanted to go dun-dun-dun, foreshadowing. Yes, and... If anyone forgot this part of the story by now, they're probably starting to remember what happens to little boys on Pleasure Island. Ooh, that name. Pleasure Island was wonderful, just as Foulfellow had said. And when Jiminy Cricket tried to get Pinocchio to go home, Pinocchio turned his back on his tiny friend. I'll go back after a while, he said. Right now I want some fun. You bet, yelled Lampwick. Come on! Every day they played. They ate candy and ice cream and cake and more candy. They broke windows and threw mud and carved up furniture. Isn't that kind of scary? Pinocchio, you're made of wood. Mm. Good, said the mayor. Go to it, boys. Fine, cried the coachman. They're almost ready. Pinocchio, begged Jiminy Cricket. Please come with me. Who's the goody-goody, sneered Lampwick. Yeah, Pinocchio said. Go away, Cricket. I'm tired of you. He looked at Lampwick for approval. Right before his eyes, Lampwick's ears became long and fuzzy. Then he grew a tail. And then, in a twinkling of an eye, Lampwick turned into a little donkey. The coachman came running and put a rope around Lampwick's neck. 
Aha, he cried, another donkey to sell to the man who runs the salt mines. And here's Nightmare Fuel. Mm -hmm. Specifically the movie. If you watch that scene, ooh boy. He reached for Pinocchio, because Pinocchio was growing donkey's ears and a donkey's tail, too. But Jiminy Cricket shouted, Run, Pinocchio! Come on! And this time, Pinocchio ran with Jiminy Cricket. They ran to the edge of the island and dived into the water and swam away from that terrible place. We're running out of book. Yeah. Hours later, wet and tired, they came to Geppetto's cottage. But no one was there. Old Geppetto had taken Figaro and Cleo and gone to search for Pinocchio. Poor Pinocchio. It's all my fault, he told Jiminy Cricket. Will I ever find my father again? I don't know, said Jiminy. It might be dangerous. I don't mind, declared Pinocchio. It's my job to find him, even if it is dangerous. Soon away went Pinocchio, with Jiminy beside him. And what adventures they did have. Uphill, down dale, into danger, and out again. Hmm. So this is how we're getting to the end of it. And yeah, yeah, we're, we're summing up the whole whale thing. They even chased a whale to the bottom of the sea. And the blue fairy watched them all the way. She was watching when they found Geppetto at last and led him safely home. It was only then that Geppetto noticed Pinocchio's donkey ears. I'm sorry, father, Pinocchio said humbly, but I do know better now. Suddenly the evening star brightened the room and the blue fairy appeared. You have learned your lesson well, Pinocchio, she said. And as her magic wand touched him, Pinocchio felt himself turn into a real boy. Father, he cried, I'm a real boy at last. Geppetto hugged him and laughed and cried for joy. And as for Jiminy Cricket, the fairy gave him a badge of gold. And on the badge it said, Awarded to a good conscience who helped make a real boy out of a wooden head. <laughs> I laugh because it's true. Also, that's, that's a very nice rendering there. Yes, of Pinocchio the real live boy dancing with Figaro the cat. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a pretty nice rendition. I have a feeling that summary at the end was like, oh, shoot, we ran out of pages. Yes, yes, I have a feeling that was kind of what happened. Or that or perhaps we ran out of animation budget. Yeah. So, wow. Back when this was only 29 cents. Amazing. I look up an inflation calculator and take the year this book was printed and see what it would cost now. I know the official ones. I'm saying this yeah, actual and, price. Yeah, and see how it compares to the current prices of brand new little golden books, which are typically around five dollars for something that even as a kid I could read in about seven minutes. Mm. So this has been Walt Disney's Pinocchio, a little golden book, illustrations by the Walt Disney Studio, adapted by Campbell Grant. From the Walt Disney motion picture Pinocchio, based on the story by Collati. Of course, Lux talking about the darker iterations of Pinocchio reminded me of the Pinocchio from The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I don't remember that episode. Yes, um, he made friends with Billy because he thought that by eating the flesh of a real boy, he could become a real boy. It's not technically cannibalism because he was wooden. Also, I think Geppetto hated him in that version. Ah. Well, in the original versions, Geppetto had a lot of reasons to hate Pinocchio. Well, if Pinocchio was as bad as uh, we believe he was. Because a lot of old stories are cautionary tales to scare kids straight. Because it was all about bad things. The ends were never good. Unlike modern versions of fairy tales where everything ends in glitter and happiness. No, no, no. In books like The Red Shoes, the happiest thing that happens is the girl goes to church. <laughs> After she's had her feet chopped off. Ouch. But uh, that's a story for another day. I, as Lux is wincing now, I have the book. Oh, joy! And I was given it as a child, so it counts. Wow. <laughs> Once again, just to finish up the credits, book generously donated by Sasami-chan. We will put an Amazon link if we can find one. It probably won't be 29 cents. I'm sorry. We'll do what we can. Yeah, and this one isn't from McDonald's. Who knew? Thanks again for listening.